17 employees who have helped him achieve one of his dreams that came sooner than he expected. Their customer service is what has helped to attract and maintain customers in Umoja Estate. Majority of his employees are graduates. Discipline is the most important thing. Discipline. For you to, 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 be, to, be, to, be, to be employed here, you have to, to be disciplined. Then a passion of what you want to do. Because uh, a lot of people are working, but they don't have that, that passion. So uh, passion and uh, discipline, that is all it takes for one to be employed here. But all of them are well educated. All the youths here are well educated. As he hopes to grab the award come 27th November, he says that this will not only change his life, but also help him create job opportunities for many youth who've been stranded in search of better jobs. Salon and barber shop businesses have been growing because of the traffic that they've been having over the time. So I will uh, use uh, this platform to educate more youths and to sensitize them about uh, uh, the importance of, uh, of, uh, of uh, engaging yourself in any business. Julie Owino, KTN News. Well, from that business story to Matters Health, the projected numbers and the statistics on cancer in 2018 are somewhat scary. So how can cancer cases be reduced, if at all that is possible, and what can be done to discuss that and generally matters cancer? I'm joined by experts, uh, Dr. Mwiza and Dr. Catherine. Many thanks for talking to us here on KTN News. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the recently released report talks of 18.1 million uh, projected cases in 2018. Right. 9.6 million cases will lead to death, or this will be death, 50%. As a physician, perhaps to start us off in this conversation, in your line of practice, when you hear such statistics, what message does it ring to you? Um, I think the first message is that we'll have a lot of work, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but it's also a worrying trend mm -hmm. um, in the sense that uh, more and more um, people in the world mm -hmm. will suffer from cancer mm -hmm. and at least half of them are going to die from it. Mm -hmm. So it's a wake up call, mm -hmm. not just for physicians, but for, for everyone, mm -hmm. uh, world leaders, mm -hmm. politicians, mm -hmm. healthcare experts, mm -hmm. and even the general population that uh, we need to do something to change uh, this narrative. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Dr. Catherine, as your colleague talks of the need to be done something, but what needs to be done? In fact, when those are worldwide statistics. When we come back home, mm -hmm. we find that um, we, we, the, the statistics released this year mm -hmm. show that in, in a year we see over 47,000 mm -hmm. new cancer cases mm -hmm. and we lose over 32,000. Mm -hmm. So locally we are losing 70% of the cancer cases. Mm -hmm. So um, it is a bit worrying. Mm -hmm. um, it is the fact that we need to do more mm -hmm. um, early diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Um, we go out and do cancer screening and awareness mm -hmm. so that we change this, um, this, um, um, this problem. Mm -hmm. And we are also seeing that many more people are succumbing to the disease mm -hmm. um, and also because of the population increase mm -hmm. um, and the fact that people are living m beyond middle age, mm -hmm. the cancer cases are actually being reported more. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dr. Munza, what has led to the surge, the increase in the cases of cancer cases? So I think there are multiple reasons. Mm -hmm. One is the increase in risk factors. So mm -hmm. more and more people are smoking, especially in the developing world. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot that needs to be done in terms of um, tobacco management, tobacco taxation. Mm -hmm. And then but there are equally a lot of people who don't smoke but right. have cancer. So, I mean, that's what I'm saying. There are many risk factors. So mm -hmm. at least locally, some of the risk factors that we can work on are things like uh, vaccination for human papilloma virus, mm -hmm. which leads to cervical cancer. So this is a completely uh, preventable disease. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. And then things like HIV-associated cancers, which mm -hmm. are also big. Mm -hmm. And then also we've really changed how we live, how we eat, mm -hmm. how we work, mm -hmm. how we we, we don't exercise enough, there's mm -hmm. increased rate of obesity. Mm -hmm. So there's a gen generally increase in the risk factors for cancer. Mm -hmm. But there's also earlier diagnosis. More and more people are going for screening. Mm -hmm. So if more and more people are going for screening, you're mm -hmm. going to get more um, um, cases as well. Mm -hmm. So there are multiple factors. Dr. Catherine, has modernity, of course, new inventions, technology, and, and what we consume, has that led also to an increase in the cancer cases? 
Um, yes, because if we look at statistics, we mm -hmm. find the cases are increasing year by year. Mm -hmm. And this is actually in tandem with the modernization, mm -hmm. industrialization. Mm -hmm. So people are exposed more to, 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 to toxic um, waste, mm -hmm. uh, carcinogens mm -hmm. in the environment because mm -hmm. of modernization. Mm -hmm. And also the fact that... Um, Apart from that, we, you know, in the past we used to eat uh, tradition, people used to eat traditional food mm -hmm. and maybe the cases reported were few, mm -hmm. but now we are moving more to fast food, people mm -hmm. are busy, mm -hmm. we don't have time to eat, to mm -hmm. cook at home. Mm -hmm. So all those may contribute. Um, and mm -hmm. then um, because of industri industrialization, we find because of infections, the genes undergo mutation, mm -hmm. and this leads to cancer developing in our body. Is it, is it scientifically true that the cancer cells are naturally within our body? Yes, it is true. Uh -huh. Actually, something goes wrong in the genetic setup, mm -hmm. and those cells start multiplying abnormally mm -hmm. and can form growths mm -hmm. and spread even to other parts of the body. And Dr. Ari, which begs the question, if these cells were within the human <coughs> body for as long as possible, why is it that probably our forefathers did not have cancer cases as, as much as the current uh, statistics show? Um, so like Dr. Catherine said, it's all about exposure. Mm -hmm. So because of, we have more exposure to, to chemicals, to toxins, mm -hmm. things in our, in our food. Mm -hmm. We've really changed a lot of things uh, uh, despite what our forefathers did. Mm -hmm. So you have these cells in the body and mm -hmm. the body has a mechanism to kill any abnormal cell. Mm -hmm. But there's so much uh, damage that's happening mm -hmm. that the body is not able to deal with all those mutated cells so they continue to grow and evolve mm -hmm. so there's a lot that we don't know but what we know is that there are more exposures now than in the uh, in the in the past mm -hmm that we've exposed ourselves to. So the amount of damage is definitely more, mm -hmm. and hence the increase in the, in the rate of cancer. Uh, Dr. Ari, can cancer be defeated? Yes, mm -hmm. cancer can be defeated, mm -hmm. and maybe just a correction. Actually, we've had cancer in, in, in our community for many years. Mm -hmm. But, Even but the numbers are parents, not as up as they are now. <clears throat> yes, they had. Mm -hmm. Cancer can, can be defeated by early diagnosis. Mm -hmm. In fact, if your cancer is picked in stage zero or one, mm -hmm. that leads to cure. Mm -hmm. um, when it's picked a bit late, mm -hmm. then that is where problems set in, mm -hmm. uh, and then patients go through a lot of complications. Mm -hmm. And then our bodies are able to fight cancer mm -hmm. uh, um, if your immunity is very strong, mm -hmm. uh, but it reaches a point when it cannot fight anymore because mm -hmm. of the multiple mutations in the genes inside the cells. Mm -hmm. um, having said that, there are some cancers which no one is safe, mm -hmm. and you cannot do anything about it. Mm -hmm. It is by accident, mm -hmm. and it just arrives mm -hmm. um, to your doorstep. What are some of those examples of those cancers? <clears throat> Actually, 70% of all these cancers, no one knows the cause. Mm -hmm. What we've been talking about are more risk factors mm -hmm. like tobacco smoking, mm -hmm. which you can reduce, mm -hmm. alcohol, mm -hmm. um, you can reduce the intake. Mm -hmm. uh, exercise is good for us. Mm -hmm. um, the cancers caused by infections, mm -hmm. which you can uh, do something about, like mm -hmm. uh, taking children for immunization against the human papilloma virus, mm -hmm. which causes cervical cancer, penile cancer, mm -hmm. um, and other genital cancers. Mm -hmm. And even some throat cancers are caused by this virus. Mm -hmm. so How much of importance is <coughs> precaution? She talked of taking children and as far as they, they, are, they are young to right. hospitals. How much right. of importance is this? So a lot of cancer is because of exposure over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. It's not that you smoke today and tomorrow you get cancer mm -hmm. or you get infection with human papilloma virus and mm -hmm. get cancer the next day. It's about the length of exposure. So the more exposure you have, mm -hmm. um, the higher the chances. That's why the older people tend mm -hmm. to have a higher risk of cancer. Mm -hmm. So if we remove some of these risk factors from children, for example, encouraging exercise, encouraging healthy eating, mm -hmm. not smoking, vaccination uh, against uh, um, HPV and other viruses mm -hmm. like hepatitis B, mm -hmm. then we reduce the length of exposure mm -hmm. so that the risk of cancer, the incidence of cancer will go down. Mm -hmm. So the number of new cases will go down and mm -hmm. the number of people who are dying uh, from cancer will go down. Mm -hmm. So the length of exposure and the need to start these strategies uh, from our children is very important. For someone who does not drink alcohol, 
or even smoke? What are the other factors that can lead to cancer? So there's some, some cancers that are genetic. Mm -hmm. they, there are mutations in the, in the, or changes in the cell mm -hmm. that are inherited. Mm -hmm. um, some of these genes uh, lead to things like breast cancer mm -hmm. and ovarian cancer, like the BRCA genes. Mm -hmm. But these only occur in 5% of the people who get um, uh, cancers. Mm -hmm. And then there are people we don't know mm -hmm. why um, they get cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, and there could be just mutations that we have not as yet um, identified mm -hmm. or risk factors we have not yet mm -hmm. um, identified. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Catherine, have our governments, institutions, have they formulated policies that will be of aid in helping in as far as combating or even defeating cancer? Um, <clears throat> number one is the health is one of the big four agenda. Mm -hmm. So that is already a positive gesture from our government. Mm -hmm. Then it, it boils down to devolution of health mm -hmm. and um, equipping the county hospitals with facilities to be able to detect cancer early, mm -hmm. and also um, their plans mm -hmm. um, to to put up uh, four regional cancer centers. Mm -hmm. That is in Mombasa, mm -hmm. um, El Eldoret, mm -hmm. Kisumu, mm -hmm. and Nyeri. Mm -hmm. So this will actually ease uh, the burden of patients traveling all the way to, to Nairobi. Mm -hmm. um, and also the government institutions like universities, University of Nairobi, Moi University, mm -hmm. they, are, they are also really pushing towards training of a cancer specialist locally mm -hmm. and this will help in combating the problem uh, you talk of specialists the report the 32 page document report talks of one oncologist to nearly 2,000 people. How heavy of a burden is that to you as medical practitioners? So it, it's a huge burden and, and not only is there one in uh, 2,000, most of the specialists are operating within Nairobi, Eldoret or Mombasa. So yeah. the patients all over Kenya have to travel to these centers to access care mm -hmm. and this is why we are pushing for more um, specialists. For example, the University of Nairobi has recently will recently um, graduate uh, five new medical oncologists mm -hmm. and then programs like in uh, uh, MTRH in, uh, in Eldoret, mm -hmm. which is training gynecology oncologists and uh, training for oncology nurses. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the doctors, there's mm -hmm. everyone else, there's radiotherapy technicians, mm -hmm. there's nurses, mm -hmm. there's community workers, mm -hmm. and then also the physicians who will be the first contacts for mm -hmm. these patients. Mm -hmm. So the training is more um, widespread than just saying you're an oncology specialist. Uh, Dr. Catherine, uh, the cost of fighting cancer, we, we can't miss to talk about that. It's often uh, known, if not claimed, to be very expensive. Do the poor who have cancer have a chance to, to defeat or even battle cancer? Um, yes, they do have a chance. Mm -hmm. One is just by being aware that cancer exists mm -hmm. and the symptoms mm -hmm. and going to hospital early for early treatment, mm -hmm. then it is cheaper mm -hmm. to treat cancer in early stages. Mm -hmm. um, and also um, our government has put into place the National Hospital Insurance Fund mm -hmm. and with 500 shillings um, every month mm -hmm. one can actually enroll on that mm -hmm. and it can cover, uh, if you go to public hospitals, mm -hmm. it can comprehensively cover your treatment mm -hmm. yeah, or with at least a little top up. Mm -hmm. Um, but when it comes to a complicated form of cancer, maybe advanced stage, then mm -hmm. the cost is quite high mm -hmm. and you, the, the poor really suffer mm -hmm. because they have to travel and sometimes they don't even have money to travel to Nairobi mm -hmm. to come like to Kenyatta National Hospital. Mm -hmm. So it's a big problem uh, for the poor. Mm -hmm. So I think all of us, uh, the government um, and well-wishers should really come together mm -hmm. and talk about this problem. Mm -hmm. And at the in, in next month, we're having a Kesho conference. Mm -hmm. This is a conference that brings together doctors, mm -hmm. nurses, and mm -hmm. all the medical fraternities, mm -hmm. and even the cancer survivors, mm -hmm. and well wishers, and NGOs, just mm -hmm. to talk about cancer mm -hmm. and how to bring this kind of health care to the community. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, moving forward, Dr. Mwenzi, <coughs> uh, to someone who is health conscious, right. they, they want to know their health, they want to know their body. What are some of the early signs? that may be reflective of a high-rise cancer in the body? Um, so, because cancer can affect any part of the body, mm -hmm. um, so the symptoms will be specific to that area of the body. Mm -hmm. But any new lumps or uh, swellings uh, in the body, mm -hmm. uh, any unusual symptoms like chronic cough, mm -hmm. uh, fever, mm -hmm. um, sweating at night, mm -hmm. um, weight loss. Mm -hmm. So some people just come with unexplained um, weight loss. Mm -hmm. um, for example, in cervical cancer, patients will have uh, mm -hmm. bleeding mm -hmm. um, and pain. Mm -hmm. So any 
new symptom that has not been there and has lasted between two to four weeks needs to be um, investigated. Mm -hmm. The symptoms will definitely vary from the different um, cancer, mm -hmm. cancer types that mm -hmm. are there. So it's very difficult to just generalize and say. Um, so there may be some that are very specific to specific areas. So you can never know and be sure whether it is cancer or not, unless um, you do a screening for that matter. Um, I mean, and then cancer can also present, other diseases can present like cancer, right? Mm -hmm. So they share symptoms. So mm -hmm. the most important thing is that if you have symptoms that you're not sure of, mm -hmm. is to visit your healthcare um, provider mm -hmm. just to talk through them and have um, investigations. Mm -hmm. And then, <coughs> excuse me, there's some screening. Mm -hmm. For example, for breast cancer, we can do a mammogram from the age of 40. Mm -hmm. um, and then for cervix, we can do a pap smear. Um, mm -hmm. Um, from the age of 25 mm -hmm. and then for colon you can have <coughs> excuse me a colonoscopy mm -hmm. um, to just check that the colon is fine mm -hmm. um, so there's some specific cancers. again the cost of this screen is <coughs> a little bit high and yeah but a lot of these screening are available in the public um, hospitals as mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. and some are covered by NHIF mm -hmm. yeah uh, dr. Catherine as we conclude this conversation probably uh, what are your final thoughts to a Kenyan probably who is watching who is conscious of himself or even someone who has cancer at the moment and can't afford uh, to seek a medical uh, emergency I think um, just to give them a message of hope mm -hmm. and encouragement mm -hmm. that cancer is not a death sentence. Mm -hmm. And some of the unusual symptoms we feel mm -hmm. could be infection because infection in our country is more common mm -hmm. and causes more death than mm -hmm. cancer. Mm -hmm. So um, if you have in symptoms... These are infections in general or they are specific? In fact, the number one is infections. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. like um, pneumonia, um, diarrhea, you know, those stomach infections, mm -hmm. they're actually the top leading, mm -hmm. uh, followed by cancer is number three. Mm -hmm. So if you're having unusual symptoms and you are being treated for infections, mm -hmm. then they do not seem to go away, mm -hmm. then seek for maybe cancer screening mm -hmm. and do not also ignore some simple symptoms. Mm -hmm. And this um, Man, next month again, um, on the 17th of November, mm -hmm. we are having a cancer concert. Mm -hmm. We bring musicians, we bring the uh, doctors mm -hmm. and all the medical fraternity just to speak about this cancer. You know, it's high time we speak about it. Mm -hmm. And even if you are poor in the village, if mm -hmm. you are aware, mm -hmm. because the, the biggest problem is awareness. Mm -hmm. Once somebody is aware, mm -hmm. um, then they can even go for early detection mm -hmm. and treatment of this cancer. Mm -hmm. It will be happening at the carnival, carnival ground on the 17th mm -hmm. so everyone is welcome you can tune in just to see follow the events and see what are the common symptoms of cancer mm -hmm. how can we come together mm -hmm. and defeat this problem mm -hmm. even if it's not for and, cure, and the but forum is bringing together medical practitioners and, we and have musicians mm -hmm medical practitioners, mm -hmm. the patients, mm -hmm. and their families, mm -hmm. and even government organizations and private organizations just to sing about cancer. Mm -hmm. Because it's high time, like, we, we have to sing this cancer problem into the ears of the people, because mm -hmm. our patients present only to the doctors in the machinani, but they are misdiagnosed. Mm -hmm. So how can we improve on diagnosis to improve cures? Mm -hmm. Because in our country, the, 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 the death rate is 70% from cancer. Mm -hmm. Worldwide is 50%. Mm -hmm. So how can we improve to go even to have cure rates of 70% and mm -hmm. not death rate of 70%. Okay, Dr. Musa, as we finalize. Um, I think there's some simple things that mm -hmm. the WHO has um, said. They're very simple. Mm -hmm. Don't smoke, mm -hmm. reduce your alcohol intake, mm -hmm. um, exercise.